welcome back to my channel. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wanting to hear me talk about money, specifically how I am going to fund undergraduate medicine as a graduate. This year I applied for medicine as a graduate. Um, I applied for two graduate entry courses and two undergraduate courses. In the end, I was offered a place on undergraduate medicine. So at the moment, as a graduate on the undergraduate course, you are not entitled to tuition fee loans. So when I first got the offer, I was a bit disheartened because paying £9,250 a year out of your own pocket it just sounds terrifying and it is terrifying. And not only that, funding, you know, rent, bills, life, literally everything, it almost sounds impossible. So when I got the offer, I was very torn whether or not to accept the offer because it is a massive financial burden. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. It's kind of scary. I'm kind of terrified. But I thought I'd make this video today because a few people have asked me how I'm funding undergraduate medicine. So this video isn't going to touch on graduate entry medicine too much, so the four year course where you are entitled to tuition fees. I wanted to explain how I am planning to fund this degree. I'm going to talk about what options are available, hopefully show you that it's not completely out of reach or impossible. That is the aim of today's video. If you're new here, my name is Lydia and I am starting medicine in September. I am going to be making videos over the summer about applying to medicine, my tips and tricks and sort of bits about my journey. Hopefully if you're applying to medicine, you might find these videos useful. So please click subscribe and also give my video a like if you enjoy the video. Let's first of all break down the numbers. The course is five years long and you need to be able to fund the first four years of tuition fees yourself because in fifth year you are entitled to a bursary from the NHS. So you are going to need to find £9,250 per year for four years. That's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, but don't worry, you are also going to need to consider whether or not you need to fund maintenance costs. So I personally am going to be renting because the university I've got into isn't really commutable. It kind of is, but the cost of commuting would end up being very similar to renting. So I am going to have to cover the cost of renting, bills, um, food and, you know, just surviving. So on top of the £9,250 a year, I'm going to need to find money to live. Right, so that is the summary of the money I need to find. And now I wanna talk about how I personally am going to fund it. And then at the end, I will summarize your other options of things that you could do to fund the course. So the good news is you are still entitled to a maintenance loan. So I didn't know this when I first applied for undergraduate medicine. Upon research, I have found out that actually you are entitled to a means tested maintenance loan. So that is, intended normally to pay your rent when you're at university. I am entitled to the full amount of the maintenance loan, which means that I can get roughly £9,000 of maintenance loan. To me, this was the best news ever because £9,000 is going to help me a lot. That's going to basically cover the entirety of the tuition fees. I'm hoping to be able to get a payment plan set up with the university so throughout the year I can pay the tuition fees in instalments rather than a lump sum um, because of the way the, the maintenance loan is paid. So with the maintenance loan of £9,000 that is my tuition fees practically covered which is great however I still need to pay monthly rent, bills, food shop, you know hobbies, having a social life, what if my laptop breaks? Basically, you need money to survive. I have spent the last two years working as a teacher, so I have been able to save up some money. So I have got some reserves that I'm gonna to use to help pay the rent. What you could do before you apply to undergraduate medicine is take a year or two out to save up the money. I know that might not seem like the best thing to do, but if you think about the bigger picture, one or two years out working to then be able to fund a medical degree, if that's what you really wanna do, it's not, it's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, one or two years, so, that could be an option and that's what I've done. So I've worked for the last two years. I've not come straight from uni. Um, I've managed to build up a small reserve that I can use to help pay my rent. Okay, so I've got my maintenance loan, I've got my savings. So my savings are not going to cover my rent for four years. So the third way that I'm going to be funding it is through a part-time job. I was a bit worried because of coronavirus that I was gonna struggle to find a job, but I have luckily managed to find myself a last minute summer job and I am going to be working full time for the rest of summer up until term time starts. And I'm just gonna, gonna save as much as I can. Um, I think it's not gonna be too difficult, obviously like with things being shut and my holiday got canceled, 
hopefully I shouldn't be spending too much money and I should be able to save as much as possible. Basically, I want to work as much as possible in the summer so I don't have to work too many hours in term. It's all well and good working to fund the degree. If it's then gonna impact on your grades, it's actually not worth it. So yeah, work as much as I can now, save as much as I can now, and then during term time, if I need to, I'm gonna work one or two shifts a week. I'll reassess that every few months, whether or not it's something that I'm able to um, cope with. Some people I've spoken to have worked part-time um, while doing a medical degree, whereas other people say that they wouldn't be able to. So I'm just gonna see how it goes and reassess every few months. And then next summer, I'll have three or four months where I can work full-time again and then build, build up that reserve of money. So then the fourth and final way that I'm funding it is going to be through bursaries. So my university offer a bursary of 2,000 pounds, which is available to anyone who receives the maximum maintenance loan. I was lucky enough to get this bursary um, during my undergrad as well. It's really handy. Um, you know, that £2,000 saves me working for a few months, so definitely going to be relying on that bursary. You know, most universities do offer these bursaries, um, so definitely look at the website for the university you're applying to. Check if it offers a means-tested bursary, because um, the likelihood is it will, and to be honest, it's going to be a saviour, so definitely look into it. I briefly wanted to touch on other ways that you might fund undergraduate medicine as a graduate, um, just because I thought maybe I'd give you some more ideas. Um, but these aren't necessarily things that I'm doing. If you can, definitely live at home if you can commute to the university from where you are and if your parents allow you to live at home for, you know, no rent or reduced rent. Um, if you are lucky enough to be in that position, take it because then you don't have to um, pay rent or bills, you know. That would definitely be um, something I would do if I could. Obviously another option is getting funding of parents or family. For me, that's not an option, but if that is there, take it, you know, like, go for it. Also, there are other bursaries available that aren't from directly from the universities, they're from charities and trusts. Although from the research I've done, those bursaries are, are mainly available after the first year of medicine, so you apply while you're already at medical school. Um, but something to think about later on, I guess, although I would say I've heard that those bursaries aren't very big a lot of the time, they're like a few hundred pounds, which obviously helps, but it, just don't go thinking that you're gonna be getting thousands of pounds um, from these charitable trusts. But definitely research that because um, that's something I'm gonna be looking into in the future. One last suggestion, which I honestly wouldn't recommend, it be more of a last resort, is to look into bank loans. Um, Honestly, I don't really know anything about it. I haven't looked into it and I, I really wouldn't recommend it, but I guess that would be sort of a last resort if you really need to, but I would explore all other avenues before getting to that point. Um, you're better off, in my eyes, taking a year out and working um, and reapplying the next year rather than take out some sort of bank loan that you're gonna have to be burdened with and potentially struggle to pay back. Okay, so hopefully you've found this video informative. I've tried to be as transparent as possible. I will leave below um, a detailed document kind of describing how funding works for both graduate entry medicine and undergraduate medicine. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm always happy to answer questions. If you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give it a like. I have got lots more videos coming over the next few weeks. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.